Hey guys, in this video, we will be wrapping up the exercise from last time. And just in case you forgot, this is the thing that we're trying to replicate. As you can see, the letters are updating. And the beauty of data selection, I want, I mean, the beauty of the update cycle, I want to remind us again, is that we're not updating the data and then erasing everything, right? Cutting away everything and then repainting them. The beauty is that we're only appending the necessary ones that we need and we will see about this more uh, in a second so as we can see earlier the data seems to be randomizing uh, so let's make a button called that says randomize the data right now I'll click of that button when we want something to happen and then in the script, in the JavaScript, we probably want something that makes new data and we want a draw function, something that goes along here, redraws entire board. And then inside of new data, we will make the new data and then pass the data to the redraw function and then we can draw accordingly to that function. So make new data. Uh, and then somewhere here, we're gonna do redraw. Then this is right here is just redraw and intuitively we can move all of this here and probably delete this first two lines because the data will be passing passed from this here okay so instead of AJF let's do something longer so we can see a big difference when we press the update button A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T XYZ. Okay, and let's randomize it. So you can just copy and paste this little function right here, algorithm right here. Um, letters equals to letters dot slice zero to math dots random times twenty six. We'll floor that, and then we're gonna split it. Did I I'll split? Okay, redraw. And inside of redraw function, let's pass the letters. And this here is going to be called new data. Let's call it receive data, so you can you can like tell where it's coming from and stuff like that. I always like to name my variables more longer when I'm doing when I'm you know building a base so that I know which function is connected to which and what kind of direction is the program flowing to. So, and instead of, okay, we need to on click to call make new data. And perhaps when we, that already works, but when we start our program, we want it to be, we want make new data to be called. Okay, so let's observe what's going on when I press randomize data. New elements are being added, right? New elements are obviously being added. But what is not happening is that things are not being removed. I want to see the Y popping up. I should have a 1 out of 26 chance every time. Okay, yeah. Got the Y. What is happening is this. We're never, we're, we are never removing anything. So our data and our actual representation of data, how we're drawing it, is actually different. And we can see this. Let's say, let's give another div. An ID data displayer. Um, we got a slash, and then right here, you say document dots. Actually, we redraw it. Documents dots get element by ID data displayer. Dot. Let's just set the inner HTML. To letters right so of course the first run through is the same the second run through you can already see the data is actually a b c d e but not uh, the thing that is being displayed now whenever thing is added whenever a new node is added into display it is obviously the same as data right so that's not the same but when a new thing is added it's the same thing but uh, it's not being removed so how do we remove it? It's really simple. If 
few lines of code to do this. And afterwards, I'm gonna explain why stuff works. Um, divs dot enter, and then divs dot exit dot remove. Yeah. So now we can see that stuff is being removed and entered. So let me talk about why um, exit remove works. Exit is the exact opposite of enter. Exit is testing the number of exit nodes. Nodes is equal to the length of the selection minus the length of the data array. So when it's removed, right? When it's removed, the selection was like 12 or some uh, something like that. And then the length of the data array now is zero. So how many exit nodes are we returning? We're returning 12 or something like that. And then we're moving all of them. So as opposed to uh, appending the new elements the data has minus the um, number of elements in the div that we selected, which is what enter does, we're doing the exact opposite. And that removes elements that is not in the new data. Right. Uh, so that's really it. And I want to show you guys one more thing about the update pattern. And that is going to be the merge method. And to demonstrate that, we're going to call merge right here. This. And I'm going to comment it out for now. Then, you know, everything still works perfectly fine. We didn't do anything. Uh, should change. Let's set the height to a little bit more. When we randomize the data, as we can see, the shit change is not being changed. And here's the reason. This right here, when we call dot text, we're only modifying the new ones entered. We're never modifying the original elements that are selected. Right, again, internodes is the difference between the, the, the data now versus the original selection. And for the first run through, we, only, we already have one element. So that one element is never going to be included in the enter uh, for the first run through. Now I'm saying the second run through is because uh, if I get a new data that is by random uh, and empty, then we will be exiting and removing every single thing. And then if we call randomize, then there is never, then it's going to be empty selection at first, right? It's not going to be a selection with this thing already in it. Now, anyways, what merge does is that we are, we are selecting those original elements. And we're going to be calling the same function on both the original selections and the new entered nodes. So, if we save this right now, as you can see, the first run through, the shit change already changed. It's not there anymore. That's it for this video. That's the general update pattern. I want to do another um, run through. Basically, you get the data, you bind it, maybe it's to an empty selection at first. If you're redrawing something completely uh, for the first time, you might be binding it to an empty selection. Then you're gonna run uh, enter append. And then after you call enter append, each of the enter nodes is going to get access to the corresponding element data in the data array. And then you can do stuff like uh, D, returning D, or you can do things like this. Um, Let's say, give me a second. Let me change the data to first, I don't know. I, second, well, I don't know, man. And you can do, just showing you guys more ways to write this. You can do function D and then return D dots first. Uh, something's not going on, right? <laughs> okay. Like that. That's gonna work. Okay, it's not compiling correctly. What did I do wrong? So that's an element. Oh. Okay. So function D first. 
uh, you know, you, you, you can give a lot of attributes to each of the object that is going to be serving as each of the elements in your data array. And you know, you can do D dot first. So oftentimes, for example, for my for my graphical force directed graph editor that you saw in the demo, all of my data are stored like this. I'll show you guys how my data is stored. This is each of the elements and each of the element has attributes like ID, width, height, text, X, Y. And you usually keep the attribute that whatever you want to store um, and change, right? So all of these things I'll be changing. What else do I want to talk about? This is really it, right? So you enter, you append, and then whenever you call updates, you know, you, you might want to exit and remove as well, depending on application. For this application, obviously we had to, but if your application somehow is only adding things, then there's of course not a need to exit and remove. But efficiency again is the key to update. We don't want to be removing removing everything. It's as if like, it's like when you're messing with functional programming, you don't want to be, so let's say you're making a new array that is based on another array. Oftentimes, or change the original value of the array. It is way less efficient if you were to add the current array's value to a new array and then add in another element at the end of the array, then converting it back to the original array, right? That's way too much work. It's just way easier if you're just to add a new element at the end of the array at first. But that is what you're gonna be doing if you're erasing the entire canvas every time and then redrawing it. But the update function and the enter function and the exit function allows you to only calculate the exact incremental change that you need and do that little change as opposed to doing the whole thing. That is the beauty of the update pattern and thank you guys for watching. Starting from the next video, we'll be talking about something that's harder, you know, using the APIs and the update function, I mean the update pattern really set us up for that. So see you guys next time.